Welcome to um, our webinar about our accounting programs here at the York School of Continuing Studies. Um, my name is Anne Marie Taylor and I'm the program manager here. Um, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. So uh, we've got um, a bit of an agenda today. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the School of Continuing Studies. Um, are there two different accounting certificates um, and the two different ways that you can take them. Um, what accounting sort of looks like as a profession here in Toronto, the format of our courses, the CPA designation, and then of course, as I promised, tons of time for questions at the end. So a little bit about um, the York School of Continuing Studies. So we're the fastest growing continuing studies uh, edu continuing education units in Canada. Um, we have programs that are co-designed with industry leaders and subject matter experts to really bring you um, the best of the best in terms of making sure that you're job ready and prepared for, you know, whether it be your next career, a different career, or just getting started. Um, we also do a lot, we'll unpack this a little bit more uh, throughout the session, but we, we use cohort learning, which means that you start with the same group of students as peers and you travel through the certificates together. So you don't take one off courses here at the school, you're signing up for the certificate. And this means actually our completion rates are really, really high and our success rates with business students are really high because there is that sense of community. Um, and we have all of our instructors, our uh, industry experts, most of them are working professionals, so they really have a sense of what's happening on the ground. Um, but a little bit about York itself is that our community comprises of 46,000 undergraduate students, um, 7,000 uh, graduate students, over 12,000 international students representing about 178 countries. So we're um, quite a busy and diverse school. This is our new home. Uh, we have a new building for continuing education for those people who choose to learn on campus. It's in the process of being built and we're moving in this summer. So classes and will happen here rather than being sort of in different rooms all over campus. We're gonna be in one big building uh, that's modern to so get a chance to actually meet students outside um, of your program as well, which is, which is really, really great. So here at the School of Continuing Studies, uh, where we represent, uh, students represent about 84 different countries. We have close to 30 professional programs. And, um, and like I said, we've experienced a tremendous amount of growth over the last five years. And at the most recent calculation, it's been about a thousand percent growth. So it's really exciting um, for us here, which means that we could do really, really great and international, uh, interesting things. Why choose York's accounting certificates? Now I mentioned off the top that we have, um, we have two different uh, accounting certificates. And then on top of that, we have two different ways that you can complete them. So I'll cover each one separately, but the overall overview is that um, our certificate programs uh, have multiple delivery formats. So you can choose to learn on campus um, in a full-time fashion, or you can choose to learn part-time, fully online, completely flexible schedule. Um, our, we, have a, we have a condensed, program. So for our foundation certificate, it's eight months. For our advanced certificate, it is nine months if you choose the full-time pathway. Part-time, you're looking at about um, a year and a half to a year and 10 months. Now that might seem a little bit long, uh, but that's much shorter than actually uh, seeking out an undergraduate degree, which um, most of you probably already have gotten through that. Uh, so all of our courses are CPA approved um, and they ensure your pathway into the PEP program and designation. Um, we go through that on a yearly basis so you can feel secure knowing that your courses will um, help you get to your designation. And I talked briefly off the top about the cohort learning. Um, this really learning with the same group of students throughout your studies, whether it be in the part-time program or um, through the um, through the full-time program that's on campus, you're learning with the same group of students of like-minded peers that really help establish community and network, um, study groups. There's a whole bunch of things that happen in these groups um, that really allow you to sort of set yourself up for success as you move forward. In addition to the overall learning framework, there's a whole bunch of extra things that happen, and I haven't listed them all listed them all here. Um, but we have we partner with the CPA Ontario um, to have you gain access to a lot of their learning events. Sometimes they come and provide things here on campus. Um, there's a 10,000 copies, which is like a like a 
a speed networking mentoring uh, program that's really fantastic with working professionals that pair you up. Um, you get free access to um, Excel and LinkedIn Learning. Um, we have an entrepreneurship in, uh, initiative through Innovation York. Um, we often have panel discussions and guest speakers depending on the course and how everything is done. We also do a lot of applied learning. So it's not um, sort of go away and study and write the exam. We get you to be working in an environment that will help you prepare for the designation. So it is case-based, it's very applied. You're kind of rolling up your sleeves and digging into the material. Um, and what's not here is um, we, al we also host um, workshops from time to time. So coming up this weekend, we have a workshop on business analytics for our accounting students that's free. Um, and again, it's just a deeper dive into Power BI, um, Power Pivot, and that type of thing to really help them excel not only in their course, but later on in their careers. So who are our students? Um, so this might be familiar to you on the line, but uh, they're university or college graduates. Um, some of our students have no accounting experience. They're looking to shore up, uh, to advance in their careers or maybe start a new career in finance and accounting. Um, but we also have students who are coming back to um, also get their designation. So they have experience in the field. They might be a clerk or something like that who are looking to go for their designation. Uh, we have uh, a fair amount of newcomers to the field, uh, career changers, upgrading, uh, CPA designation, all of those good things that I've mentioned. Um, and we also um, have a lot of international students who join us every year from uh, countries all over the globe. And in our part-time program, because it's online, we also have students coming from not only globally, but we have students who are coming from all over Canada who get to join in in the learning. So um, as you know, the accounting designation um, is, you know, if you're going to become an accountant, the path to that is really, um, although you can do it in other ways, it is governed by the, by the charter professional um, accountants and requires a designation. Um, and that pathway sort of allows, opens doors to becoming um, an accounting generalist, uh, a financial, um, financial reporting, um, audit, if that's your thing, uh, whether it be external or external tax expert, um, IT um, operations also usually falls under the finance department as well. Um, but I think this, this slide probably best outlines sort of where CPAs are now working. Um, and it's not necessary that this is your chosen career path, but it is um, our, our certificates do provide you with the opportunity to advance in this direction. So CPAs are kind of everywhere in a variety of things. It's not just accounting and finance. It's also project management. It's a whole, it's across all industries. Um, you know, I think sometimes we think of accountants and it's like, oh, we think of tax and, and audit, but it's really much more broad than that. And they're really sort of you're the business partners in an organization, helping make decisions, helping with strategy. So all over the place. In terms of accounting jobs here in Toronto, this is sort of what the landscape looked like um, up until the fall of last year. And it has been, I went back and looked at the numbers and it has been fairly um, stable over the last um, little bit. So I've kept the numbers as is. Um, but really, this is sort of the trajectory that, and this information comes from CPA Ontario itself, that this is about the trajectory, depending on how you're advancing in your careers, um, sort of what you can expect with the investment in your designation. If there's any questions about the designation, um, I will, I'll be quite upfront, I will sort of uh, put you in touch with, uh, with the folks at the CPA Ontario, they're best positioned to answer all of those questions, but I'm happy to, to chat about that later. So let's dig into the program details. As I mentioned, there are two certificates. One is the accounting certificate. Um, we sort of call that the foundation certificate. So this is if somebody has not taken any um, accounting or maybe um, like a Bachelor of Commerce before. You, these are the eight courses that exist here. And one of the things that stands out with our program is that we actually have a capstone course. Um, and that sort of ties all of the learning together to make it really, really applied. The first four courses listed in red at the top are the prerequisites for the advanced certificate, which I'll be talking about in a minute. And um, you take these courses sort of two at a time. 
And these are the courses for the advanced certificate in accounting. It's not a prerequisite to take uh, the foundation before the advanced. To get into the advanced program, you just need to have taken um, the four prerequisites in red and have um, a university degree and some other things that we'll, we'll talk about at the end. So again, the advanced certificate in accounting has nine courses, again, with a capstone at the end that ties everything together. If you have very little um, knowledge of accounting or it's been a while since you've taken fine, um, like introduction to financial accounting or introduction to managerial accounting, you might wanna brush up on those before you dig in. The intermediate and advanced courses are really, um, they are a lot heavier in terms of the workload and the prior knowledge that you need. In terms of the full-time um, certificate, it has um, the courses run during the day for the foundation certificate. So we generally have two sections, sometimes three, but the first section runs 8.30 to 11.30 in the morning. And then the next one generally starts um, from like noon to three and then 6.30 to 9.30 at night or sorry, three, no, 3.30 to 6.30 uh, at night. And then if we add a fourth, it'll be in the evening. Uh, but our courses run where you take two courses at a time. This is how we get, um, we get you finished quicker. So it's a, quite a condensed program. Um, so on Mondays and Wednesdays, for example, you might take Intro to fi Financial Accounting. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, you'll take Economics for the first six and a half weeks. And then you get a, a scheduled break, which is about a week long, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on what's happening at the university in terms of spring break or reading week. And then you come back and take the next two, and then there's a break, and then you come back and take the next two. So for students starting in, um, in September this year, the foundation students will finish up in, uh, in April. So it, it is very fast paced, um, but you start at 8.30 in the morning and you're done at 11.30 three hours a class each day, and then you sort of go on from there. We have, um, we often have group work and projects. So although we do have some courses still have uh, midterms and finals, we don't rely um, too, too heavily on those. We really wanna make sure that the education is practical. So for the part-time certificates, so the part-time certificates are done um, completely online uh, and the term we use is asynchronous and that means it's self-directed there's no live instruction it really takes place um, you know you're managing your time most of the students who take the part-time certificate are working professionals um, who are working and sort of need to manage their learning without having you know um, appointment based lectures so um, you're learning online but you're still benefiting from the cohort there's still group work to be done um, there's a lot of team projects and things like that. So you do actually get to know your fellow student colleagues through this, but this is a way to sort of what um, a schedule might look like. That being said, um, this is very much up to you to manage. There's scheduled um, sort of due dates to keep uh, everybody on track, but you, with this program, you take one course at a time. So that's why it runs a little bit longer. And, um, the courses last about eight to nine weeks, depending on where they fall within the year and a half. So we talked about sort of what it means to sort of on the road to your CPA designation, if that's what you'd like to do. So assuming you have no, uh, you have no sort of prior uh, knowledge of accounting, what you need is a, um, a post-secondary degree. Um, to enter our programs, and as well as if you're an international student, you need English language scores or IELTS of 6.0 and higher, and I'll cover that at the end. Um, and then you would start in the postgraduate certificate in accounting, which is the foundations one that I talked about. And then you would go on to take the, um, the postgraduate um, certificate in advanced accounting, then you have all your prerequisites. And then that basically sets you up for the PEP modules that sort of plops you right in there and the PEP modules can be taken with CPA Ontario directly. And then um, throughout that, you'll have your work experience and then that gets you ready for your, um, the CPA final common exam um, and then your CPA membership. So where we sort of really help you out is in these first two areas to make sure that you have the knowledge base um, and the necessary um, 
education credentials to get you into the PEP modules. You can't um, just enter into the PEP modules. You have to apply to do that. And they look over your transcripts and a whole bunch of things to get there. They can answer all of those questions and they have a lot of really great information nights for possible students. Um, but we do bring in um, somebody from the CPA to sort of go over all of that with our new students. In terms of next steps, um, we have uh, the program offerings that are currently available. We have the uh, part-time only, so the fully online Foundations of Accounting is still open for spring uh, 2022. Um, and then fall 2022 is also available on the website. Winter 2023 um, hasn't been posted to the website yet, but um, it will be in the next sort of month or two if you're planning that far ahead. You don't have to apply just, just yet. Um, for the advanced um, professional program, now this is a really, I have to admit, this is a really competitive program and it fills up really quickly. So if you are thinking about applying for the fall 2022, cohorts. Um, we are currently running two sections. Um, I would apply uh, within the next month or so um, because we're almost at capacity and we often reach capacity a couple of months before the program starts. So um, if you're thinking about that, um, I would, you know, reach out. There'll be some advisors' names and numbers um, at the end of this. I would, I would highly consider applying for the fall if you're, if that's what your plan is to do it to do it really soon. Um, and then winter, I would say that generally we reach capacity around October, November. So if you're debating um, for the advanced program, I would get your, um, your application in early. The regular certificate in accounting um, that um, we have, we tend to have more sections of that. And so there tends to be more spots open. For the for the part time versions of both of these, it's not um, that space is a lot more um, is a lot more open. So there's not sort of the worry about uh, applications for that. It's really for the in person full time programs. They tend to fill up very quickly. So the application process is really quite simple. It's a you need a university degree. Um, English language scores um, of 6.0 overall, and this is for um, for international students who have not uh, studied in English. If you have studied in English, you are exempt. There's more information about that on the website. Um, the, you need a video statement of interest as well as a resume. And then advanced accounting, as I mentioned earlier, that is, you know, there's four prerequisites. So you need um, a fundamentals or introduction to financial accounting intro to managerial accounting, um, economics, micro and macro, um, and statistics. Um, so you need all of those um, to be admitted into the program. That being said, just because you have all of this does not guarantee entry. As I mentioned, these are quite competitive programs. So just because you have the minimum, um, it doesn't guarantee entry. We do sometimes have wait lists. Um, but the applicants are very, very strong and it makes my choices um, quite difficult uh, at this time of year. So this is um, just a, like a quick overview of all of the details. So I've included the tuition breakdowns for all of the, all of the programs. You might want to take a screen grab or a, um, a photo of this. So the, um, this is what the tuition is right now and is obviously subject to change depending on um, the government. So, but this is what the tuition is now. Um, and you'll see that, as I mentioned, the postgraduate certificate in accounting, the full time is eight courses. You take two at a time and that's eight months. It's daytime. So this is offered definitely during the day. So if you're working full time, this, this may or may not be an option for you unless you can get leave from work. Um, the, Advanced certificate in accounting, um, again, that's nine courses. You take two at a time with the last one being uh, a standalone. It is in person and on campus. It's an evening class. So this one takes place at 6.45 to 9.45, Monday through Thursday. It's got the same TikTok as the um, foundation certificate where you're taking, um, you know, you'll be taking intermediate financial accounting one and audit um, at the same time as an example. Um, so you take intermediate financial accounting um, on Mondays and then you take audit on Tuesdays and then 
intermediate financial accounting on Wednesdays and audit on Thursdays. So that's how you would work through um, that. And again, just a reminder about the four prerequisites. Um, for the part-time program, as I mentioned, they are fully online, um, self-directed learning. So there's no um, scheduled lectures. You have still have the great, um, same great instructors that are working, um, you know, in the field and have, you know, are really engaging, but there's no set lectures. You get to plan your learning out on your own uh, with the scheduled due dates for the class. And again, they run about a year and a half for the foundations program and a year and 10 months for the full-time program. For the international students that are on the line, um, I will say that the part-time programs are not um, postgraduate work permit eligible. That would, you'd need to be in a full-time uh, program in order to be eligible for that. And then these, if you wanted to take another screenshot, these are all the really good numbers uh, that you need to have. So the, um, our registration, uh, registration probably not for just now, but um, if you have questions about the program, David is our advisor. He's fantastic. We work very closely together and he can be reached at continue at york.ca. Um, registration uh, is for any of your questions about the actual sort of, not the application process, but actually like registering, like registration and payment, that's for them. I will say that if you have questions, please go to maybe go to David first if you're debating things and wondering how things work and then go to registration. As you can imagine, our registration team is um, extremely busy and um, and they have, uh, so you might get your, you'll probably get your questions answered a little bit more quick, quicker from, um, from David than waiting to go through registration because they're dealing with all of the sort of nuts and boltsy things um, about ongoing programs and things like that. So I promised that it would be about a half hour. So that's where we are. So I'm going to open it up for questions. Please use the question, um, the question uh, tab at the bottom to answer, and I'll go through them sort of in a sort of systematic fashion here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to back up and put that screen up. Okay, what is a capstone course? Great question. So the capstone course takes all of the previous courses and puts them all together. So instead of just learning, um, so you have done, uh, say, your uh, economics courses, your stats courses, and um, and your uh, financial introductory financial courses, and those happen, you know, in discrete courses. The capstone pulls that all together. So you'll be working on a project or case that takes all of the information that you've learned and puts it together as it would happen in a business setting. So the first question is, hi team, I've completed my uh, BCom and MBA in India and the syllabus includes the prerequisites. Can I apply for the advanced program? Yes, you can. Um, you just need to see um, average or above your IELTS if you didn't study in English, but if you've completed those, yes, you can. I'd like to do uh, both part-time and full-time. Um, Esmeralda, that's not an option. You have to choose one program or the other, unless that was answering the poll, the poll question. So for anybody who's considering the full-time or the part-time, um, your options are sort of, you'd be learning, it really is a full-time program, so it is 12 hours of um, in-class plus homework um, each week. For the part-time, it's a little bit less. I would say it's because you're only doing one course. It's about four to six hours, depending on what your homework looks like in any particular week and projects. Um, but that is a great sort of thing to be thinking about when you're, if you're working full-time, full-time uh, programs might be a little bit challenging. And um, But for the advanced program, it's at night. So you can plan your day around that and speak with your employer. Um, if you need, if anybody needs accommodation, um, this, the York University has a great student accommodation. Um, so if you are somebody who needs extra time for exams or needs to have information presented in a different way, the student accessibility um, folks are very, very fast and our, the program coordinator, myself and the instructor work to make sure that we um, ensure that the accommodations that you need are met so that you can be successful in your education. Can courses be easily, um, can I keep up with courses as somebody with no accounting background? So if you do not have an accounting background, I would suggest that you start in the foundations program. Um, 
because you would need you need to sort of go and learn those those pieces and it would set you up for success for the advanced program if you've taken three of the four introductory courses in your degree can you um can you only take the missing course no you can't not at the moment so our courses are run as cohorts like we you enter into the certificate not for um not for individual courses so if you were missing a course um you would need to go and take that course and then apply but what i would suggest um jasmine is to maybe reach out to david and if you have a an unofficial copy of your transcripts like we can we can go through that and make sure that like just to see that are you indeed missing um those courses or that particular course um can you enroll in the professional accounting directly please share the requirements for eligibility so i went i went over that so the you need a um at least a c um a university degree at least a c a college um a degree would be um, a B and you would need in if you're an international student who has not studied in English you need an English language scores of 6.0 through the IELTS um, and you would need the four prerequisites so that that doesn't guarantee you admission um, we review each application separately on the website um, it has all of the things that you need to do um, and have that's there but those are the big ones for the advanced accounting in 2018, I completed the course business communication. If I apply for an online accounting certificate, how long is a university course recognized? Um, if you completed it through one of our certificates, you should get credit for it. If not, if you completed, if you completed it through another university, um, you can apply for a transfer credit. And what that means is that we will recognize in each certificate, we'll recognize up to one course um, where you've studied before. Again, there's requirements for that. Um, it's on the website under our policies, um, but you can you can apply for that. It has to be done um, after you've applied and um, prior to the start of the program. But yes, it, the the requirements are it has to cover 80 to 90 percent of the same um, content, and there's a grade requirement as well. You want to gain entry to the September program, how do you get the acceptance letter? So you'd need to apply. Um, I would say apply soon-ish. We are about, we are at a roughly 70% capacity right now. So I would apply soon. All of um, you apply on the website. So if you go to the School of Continuing Studies um, at York University, you apply on the website. I finished almost half of the CPA prep courses and would like to switch uh, to your professional program. Will you transfer the courses that I was approved with CP Ontario? How is the process? So again, much like the um, education from a prior, another university, you would need to have, like we could give you credit for one of those uh, programs. But I think, Anna, that's a really good question for the advisor. Um, and also to have with CP Ontario, I don't wanna give you, for if you're pursuing your designation, um, I don't want to give you um, advice that might be outdated. So contact David about that. And if necessary, David and I will have a chat and we might put you in touch with um, the student advisor at CPA Ontario. Um, and they'll best direct you so that you're not um, going through a whole bunch of things uh, or redoing a bunch of things, okay? Wanted to know if the prerequisites are compulsory for everyone to get into advanced accounting. Yes, they are. Everybody has to take the same courses or has to have those four prerequisites. Now, sometimes managerial accounting is like, well, um, if you've taken cost accounting, corporate accounting, um, or if your course is called performance management, we also recognize those as well. They're all in the same domain. Uh, can you switch from part-time uh, uh, to full-time? Depending on um, capacity. So because the full-time is in class, if we are over capacity in the classroom, that's a fire hazard, so we can't let you in. But we do um, allow movement if space permitting. There is a difference in tuition, as you can see from the slide. See, there's a fee to transfer, um, and then there's a difference in tuition as well. Um, and there also might mean that there's a break in your studies, but if that's, once you're a registered student, we'll help you out with that and come up with a schedule that works for you. After you finish both 
uh, postgraduate and advanced uh, postgraduate diploma? Will you get a any certificate from the university? Um, so you get a certificate from the School of Continuing Studies um, after each one of your programs. How is the postgraduate certificate in advanced accounting evaluated? Quizzes, projects, only one final exam per course? Excellent question. So there are a variety, depending on the courses, there's a variety of different types of assessments. So we try to keep, like this is an adult learning environment, so we understand that not everything is, you know, midterms and finals. There is um, projects and group work and casework to be done. So some of your courses will have midterms and finals. Some of them will only have, uh, will have projects and then a final. There will be some quizzing, um, but it's really meant for you as sort of checkpoints to prompt you to keep going and to sort of check your own learning. But I would say that most of our courses are a mix of casework, projects, um, midterms, and finals. I have a three-year bachelor's degree and a two-year associate's degree. Is that enough for me to enroll in the postgraduate certificate? Um, it should be. Again, uh, DT, you might want to reach out to David um, and share because we'll have to take a look at that. I can't, I can't, without seeing your transcripts, I don't want to say yes for sure, but it sounds like you do. So if you have the grades, um, if you have your degree, and if you have the other prerequisites um, that are identified on the website, you can absolutely apply. Um, whether or not you get in, that's where the competition um, sort of starts, okay? I completed two courses from a different college which are needed for the advanced program. If I finish the other two, can I take the advanced PG course? Yes, providing that your grades are sufficient and you have, um, you have all, of the, um, all of the other things that are needed to for the application, your application will be considered. We have, um, because we're, because we know we're working with, um, you know, adult learners and professionals coming back to school, like if your application is missing something, we do write back and ask um, just in case something wasn't uploaded. Um, so like there's a very sort of generous, kind spirited way of, with our registration team and even when I evaluate applications, that if I see that something is missing or something isn't clear, we often, I would say 99% of the time, reach back out and ask for clarification because it could be just that something was missing or something didn't get uploaded properly. What shall be the duration of this, uh, this study and the work permit? So um, we, our programs, depending on the program, are eight and nine months. So that any sort of visa questions or duration of the study permit, it would be for your work or for the length of your study. In terms of work permit, those are two separate things. And I'm not a qualified immigration um, official and I don't wanna give you the wrong information. Um, so please speak with somebody who, who can sort of let you know what that process is because you can have a variety of different study permits, one that allows you to work and one that doesn't or allows you to work a specified amount of time. Um, if you want to reach out, um, Raul, for um, York International, if you just Google York University International, they have um, virtual drop-ins. They are fantastic. You email them, the volume of email that they get is um, extremely large. You're better to go to the virtual office hours and um, see if you can get your questions asked there, answered there, sorry. Do international students have to complete the first two prep courses in order to enter the PEP modules? That is a CPA, that's a great question. That is a CPA um, Ontario question. So if you go Google CPA Ontario and go to, I think it's potential students, um, they be able to let you know, because that's outside of our certificate. I've recently completed my degree in accountancy and finance, which program is suitable for me um, to apply to. So I would probably, without knowing which courses you've taken and see if you've taken the four, four prerequisites, I would probably suggest that the advanced accounting program is good for you. That being said, I'm going to back up and or go forward and I'm just gonna put this contact information slide back up. So you might want to, um, if you're not working with an agent, you can, con you can also contact David, who's the continuing studies advisor, and he'll be able to give you sort of a little bit of insight onto, you know, is which one to spend your application fee on, okay? When will the postgraduate certificate start? Um, so we have three intakes a year. We have one in May, one in September, and one in January. 
the May um, certificates start um, at about the middle of the month and same in September and January. So they each start around about the 15th of the month. Um, for the full-time certificates, the part-time certificates start about a week later. And, um, but like I said, if we're accepting students for the um, foundation certificate for a little while yet, the advanced for May is closed, but everything is open for September and soon to be winter. Any required uh, percentage in university degree, um, a Canadian C or higher. So uh, 60%. So after doing advanced professional accounting, can we get jobs related to finance um, apart from accounting jobs? Yes, yes you can. Um, other finance jobs also require um, designations, so it's just best to make sure that you, you are eligible for employment. Um, in terms of payments, great question. Um, you, it is one payment. Um, but you can uh, work with the registration team if um, you qualify to separate out the payments. Does the, does the postgraduate certificate in advanced accounting full-time available in May 2023? Yes, it will be. It's, it's run every year and every sort of uh, September, January, and May. I just didn't put it on the slide. That feels like a lifetime away. <laughs> Do you need a scientific calculator for the accounting program? Um, I, I don't think so. Um, you, you do need knowledge of Excel though. It's not a prerequisite, but it's good to have. Can I apply from, uh, can I apply for September? Absolutely. You can apply for September. Applications are still open. Um, I encourage you to apply sooner rather than later though, because they will fill up before the summer. Can I apply through ACA without any bachelor's degree? I would reach out, uh, Prakash, I would reach out to David about that. We do require a bachelor degree. So I'd have a conversation with David, or if you're working with an agent, um, with that. So what are the consequences if you're not if you're unable to finish the program on time? You'd have to go back and take the courses when they are next available. So if you have to drop a, drop a course for a particular reason, or if you are unable to successfully complete um, a course and you you know or meaning that you fail. Um, you have the option to pay to take that course again at the next time it's offered. And we place you in that course on the schedule that you'd, um, that works for you. The, for the IELTS Esmeralda, um, you can take them anywhere that offers them. You need the academic IELTS. Or if you um, look at our website, you can also take Duolingo, um, the TOEFL. There's specific ones that you need to take. So we can't just take a general one. But the IELTS, they're generally done, um, there's like central testing locations pretty much everywhere. Do I get a T22 uh, for the fee paid? That is a good question. I believe you get a, um, I'm not sure if it's the T2202, but you should be getting um, tax credit. I can't be sure about that though. How do you take the English language exam? Um, you can take a variety of, I think Esmeralda asked this question um, a little bit later, but yeah, you can take it anywhere. Um, it just has to be done by, um, there's a list of them on the website where you can take it. And they're generally, the results are good for two years. Do we require any pre-assessments or can we have a pre-assessment before the application? No, I'm sorry. Um, we don't do a pre-assessment. If you're working with um, an agent, they know the requirements for our programs. Um, but it's, it's really, it's a fairly simple application process. Um, it's really just those, those couple of things for each one that you need. Um, so WES isn't required, at least not that I know of. We need, um, obviously, your transcripts in, in English, but we don't require those. And again, in your BCom and your MBA, if you've taken the, pro if you've taken the prerequisites for our program, you can apply uh, to the Advanced Accounting Program. Just make sure that you go through that checklist. Okay, I think that was the end of the question of people who are still on the line. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much, everybody. That was really, really great. There is a, a ton of really good questions. Again, this isn't your only opportunity. We do these quarterly. So if there weren't things um, that we didn't have a chance to cover here, it feels like I could run just a whole Q&A session rather than going through the program. Um, but do reach out to David or the registration team, depending on your questions, and we're happy to answer them. We want to make sure that you're deciding on the right program. It's a big decision. Uh, so we want to make sure that um, that we have all of that answered. Okie dokie. I think that's it. So, um, so thanks very much.
uh, for all of you who are left, I wish you a wonderful day. And uh, again, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. We're happy to answer them. Um, and uh, hopefully we get to um, have you learn with us in the near future. Okay, thank you.